Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce some very basic strategies for approaching our probability problems. Some of you may have studied some probability in other classes. Um, this is going to be pretty elementary, um, but it gives you enough understanding to tackle the kinds of probability that we'll be seeing in geometry this year. Probability is defined as the number of winners divided by the number of possibilities. And your solution is going to be expressed as a simplified fraction. So the elementary probability process is really three steps. The first thing we want to do is determine all the possibilities in a logical manner. Uh, probably the easiest way to do this is to simply write them out in a systematic orderly way. A one person may do this differently than another. They both may be valid, but you have to be systematic in how you do it so you don't duplicate things or leave things out. Uh, and I encourage you to write them out and then count them. How many possibilities do you have? That's your denominator of your probability. And the second step then is once you have all your possibilities, determine the number of favorable outcomes. How many of those possibilities work. Those are your winners. That's the numerator of your fraction. So you have the number of winners divided by the number of possibilities. Simplify that fraction and there you go. There you have the probability. So let's take a look at a couple sample problems. Number one, if two of the four points in the diagram here are selected at random, what is the probability that both lie on ray CA? Now, there's a couple ways to do this one. We're going to do the, the process I just talked about. We're just going to write out our possibility. So we're going to select two points at random, but we're not going to randomly select them at this point to figure out what they are. We're actually going to choose them intentionally. So let's say we picked out A and then B. Okay? And you know, once you select a point, you can't, you're not going to select it a second time for the second time. So that's our first choice, that's our second choice. And let's say we selected A and then C and then A and then D. So that really exhausts A, okay? But now we could select B and then C. We're not going to select B, A, okay? We already have that, that's over here. So we have to go select, we did AB, we did AC, we did AD, now we're going to do BC and BD. BC and BD, okay, and then finally we're going to do CD. So we have one, two, three, we have six possibilities and the number of winners, our winners here, uh, if they have to both lie on CA, well, AB lines on CA, AC, AD does not, BC does, BD doesn't, and CD doesn't. So our winners are highlighted. That's three out of six or one out of two. Now there is an algebraic or mathematical way of doing this. If two of the four points are selected at random, what is the probability that both lie on CA? Well, isn't there a chance that three out of the four lie on CA in our first choice? So in our first choice, we have three out of four. Now we assume that in our first choice, we had one success. Right, because we had a three or four chance of being successful. We assume one of them was successful. And then in our second choice, well, if one of them was successful, we only have a two out of three chance of that happening. Because I remember I took one of my possibilities away, so I, I only have three points left. So I have two out of the three 
would lie on CA if I was successful choosing either A, B, or C the first time. Then we multiply those two together. So first choice and second choice, we multiply that together and we get 6 out of 12, which simplifies to 1 half. So for this type of problem, we can do that algebraically. And you'll see a couple problems like that in your classwork. Not all of them are that way, though, so you have to be careful. Some of them you may just have to write out all the possibilities. Let's take a look at a different kind of sample problem. Now, this one, we can't uh, write out all the possibilities. So the question is, a point Q is randomly chosen on segment AB. What's the probability that it is within five units of point C? Well, first things first, if we choose a point on AB, 3 to 15 is 12 units long. So this 12 is our number of possibilities. Something out of 12. So that is going to be the denominator of our fraction. Now, so point Q could be anywhere on here, but what's the probability that it's within five units of C? Well, if it's to the right of C, we only have four units. We can't go any further than four units. 11 to 15 is four units, so there'd be four units there. And we need to go five units from C, right? So we need five more units, which would take us 11 minus 5 is 6. So 11 minus 5 is 6. So between 6 and 15, that's a total of total possibility of 9 units, the 5 plus the 4. Those are my winners. This is my winning region because that's all within five units of or of five units of C. So anywhere in that nine units is a winner. So nine out of twelve reduces to three out of four. And there's my final answer. The probability that point Q lies within five units of C is three out of four. So there's a basic introduction to probability. And I will see you in class.